<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Michael Jackson Creative. My name is Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello everyone, my name is Clementine, welcome back to Clementine Creative. I had a little moment of hesitation there. <laughs> Wasn't sure if I got my intro right. Um, I am back with another environment painting. Uh, I decided to do one more painting, this is the last, not one more painting, one more video where I paint an environment. This is the last one for now because I do want to keep this project a little bit more secret so it has a little bit more surprise impact when it actually comes out so it's not like Oh yeah, we already seen this on YouTube. Uh, I want it to still be a surprise for the final product, uh, which once it's done, the trailer is going to be on YouTube, so you're going to be able to see it. Uh, but for now, it is what it is. And basically what you're seeing here now is me doing another area for the same clients. So this type of area right here that we have is combined ice and fire, which is something that's really hard to sometimes paint because they're opposing elements and uh, they really don't fit together very well. Uh, but I did try to base, I, what I did was I divide the areas with a basically like a fall. I think that's what it's called. Like a, uh, yeah, I think that's what it's called, a fall. So the only way to get through it is to either go around on the left side and go down or through the bridges now the bridges are shortcuts to basically in the game itself these two bridges present shortcut opportunities to get to your destination faster however these bridges do hold their own dangers as you step on them uh, meaning there could be enemies and, and various dangers uh, for you to be able to pass this shortcut right because it obviously cuts away quite a big uh, chunk of um, road. Now, when this project, not this project, when this painting here is going to be done, it's still not going to be the final. There's still some changes that are going to be done in the entire area, not just this area. Uh, entire, oh my god. <sighs> if you ever did commentary for, any, for anything, you'll see how sometimes you just start saying two things at the same Like, you want to say one thing, uh, but what comes out of your mouth is completely different because <laughs> you want to you think on the fly you know you don't I you don't have I don't have this like scripted or anything it's ridiculous but basically uh, when I finish the all of the zones and I combine them into a one huge map which later becomes uh, the actual play board uh, I'm gonna have to make some you know fixes some areas are a little bit too big compared to others so I'm gonna have to fix some of that but you know these are all the things you should do after the entire thing is already done um, here you can actually see me now rendering in a um, dungeon this is like a temple a Viking style temple this entire area is highly Viking themed uh, even though Vikings are people that usually lived in more frosty areas we have some fire thing going down going on in the bottom uh, I still made their village look uh, more Vikingish even though Vikings technically didn't live in lava areas you know uh, but I think that's an interesting concept of how different would the actual culture or their armor or whatever be if they lived in a different area I wonder if that depends uh, and that's why I like video games and such because you can really explore that idea so here I skipped quite a big chunk of actual recording just because uh, it's all just fine detailing, you know, not something really interesting. Here you can see basically that this area is new, something you didn't see me do. Uh, it just took a long time and it's not that interesting, it's just a tedious pro process of adding in these little tiles. Uh, the reason why I did this... Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm speaking really strangely. Uh, the reason why I did these like, what is it called, these platforms, is sort of to get the feeling of, you know, of going down. Um, like, uh, basically like the, the entire area is a little bit higher and you're going down as you go. But then when you come down to the lowest platform, which is the one where now the snow is, where the bridges are, uh, that's the lowest one, right? And the bridges are more or less straight. They don't really have a tilt to them. Um, but here, you're now going to see me render this lodge house, which is another point of interest in this game. Um, and I wanted to observe, I want you to observe how I do it. The beginning really starts off easy. You can see me do these basic geometrical shapes, and that's how everything starts off, you know. Uh, it doesn't start off complex. It starts simple, and then you keep on adding. 
Now, when you start out, this kind of stuff is almost impossible to do for some reason. <laughs> like, I remember when I started out, this all seemed like there's no way I'm going to ever be able to do it. But, you know, through time, it's just a matter of practice, really. So now you're going to slowly see me adding color, not just shapes, but also eventually color. You can see I'm starting to fine tune it a little bit. You can see adding a little bit of detail, sketching out, getting the general idea. But I'm going to spend a considerable amount of time now detailing this entire thing out. Now, these are quite high resolution pictures. Again, I can't say this enough uh, because, you know, we can use them as promotional art uh, or anything because they're so well detailed, you know, they're so uh, big. These, these images are large, which uh, has a huge amount of detail in it. So here you can just see me rendering out. These are the toy type of things that if this is a board game, you don't have to paint this fine. Uh, this is way too much detail for the for a board game. However, I like the idea that you're able to zoom in or zoom out and still be able to see details very clearly. Uh, but for for again for a game like a board game where you don't see the entire thing up close, you mostly see like a general map. Uh, the details are not going to be important because they're not going to show up. One important thing that I learned from Fang Zhu, if you ever watch Fang Zhu, he has a YouTube channel called FZD School. Um, basically, what he said is that the details don't save the painting. And when you start out, you don't quite understand everything teachers or people that have more experience say, just because you don't have enough experience to know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, because to, to you, when you start out, it might seem like some black magic shit, you know? <laughs> they just they just make it happen. It just happens, right? Well, it's all practice. And details do not save a painting. The general idea has to be there. As you can see now, I have the general... Pro uh, not proportions. I have the general geometry of the entire buildings figured out. I know what it's going to look like. It's not only a matter of rendering in, adding in the details. I was going to cut this piece out where I, I totally forgot about this. Uh, this is the part where I struggled a little bit to make a shield. But I did it. Here, if you watch the the TV show Vikings, you will recognize this. Uh, it's actually the... I think Ragnar's... One of Ragnar's wife, I think the first one has this uh, logo on her shield. If that's what you get, paint job, I guess. Uh, I decided to, I could not come up with anything that looked really good, so I just decided to reuse that one. I don't think that's actually copy, uh, uh, copyrighted or anything like that. It's just a paint job on a shield. But what I did decide to do is change the colors of the shield depending on which area they are in. Uh, so I'm again just copying, pasting, getting shortcuts. You know, you're not trying to also cut. You know, find short ways to how do you get faster to the end product. Don't spend. Like if you have a roof and you know you can just copy the roof and copy and paste it and change it a little bit to look make it look different, then do that. Don't draw it from scratch. Being drawing everything from scratch does not make you a great uh, artist or a great designer. Uh, being able to do pretty illustrations generally doesn't make you a good uh, um, designer. All right, we're talking about concept art um, because you have to be good at designing, not good at drawing. Obviously, you have to be good at drawing, but it's not your main focus. Never forget that. If you want to be a concept artist, not an illustrator, but somebody that comes up with designs that are going to later be used in the video game and you're prepared to commit to designing those characters all the way through from maybe even designing their belt, just the belt, and the entire character, or maybe just his eye, you know, it's, if you're ready to commit yourself to that, that's concept art, that's what you got to do. And that's not illustration, right? And the most important thing is design, right? Uh, and speed. So when you're starting out, you never want to worry about speed. You shouldn't think about how fast you're doing something. However, if you can find shortcuts, you should use them. You should use them to your advantage. The thing about digital painting is it's a really advantageous, advantage, advantageous medium. Uh, in, in like, unlike in traditional painting where you have to paint everything from scratch here you can copy and paste and really use the medium you know don't hold back if i'm pretty sure that if uh you know if it was possible in traditional painting a bunch of people would have done it there as well uh you know so don't let it bother you it's not cheating 
uh, if anything, it's cheating on time. You know, you're making it last. You're making it <laughs> not last. You're making it go faster and everything. So that's really good. But now I'm just adding some snow in, and here I began to render out a sakura tree. Uh, sakura is a cherry blossom from Japanese called sakura. Uh, it's a cherry tree that does not have any um, actual cherries. It's just a tree that has the I don't know the paddles basically, right? So this is another point of interest. You can go here and you know maybe you'll have a mission or whatever. Uh, I wanted to put that in. There was gonna supposed to be something else there, some kind of lava, something. Uh, but it doesn't fit there. You know, the lava doesn't fit with the whole ice world, right? So I decided to put in the sakura tree because the sakura tree. You know, I love how I'm saying sakura so many, so much, not so many times, so much. Uh, but basically, this tree uh, has a really nice color, like pink, that's like nice and warm. Totally different from the entire the entire cool environment in the background. Uh, and it really lives it, it makes it more alive the entire painting really looks more alive and it just looks magical the entire thing really does look more magical now designing or not designing painting a tree is one of the more difficult tasks i believe i feel like that's one of the things that i still struggle with uh but since they're just trees i don't let it bother me too much because uh, i don't think the trees are that big of a part of anything right now anyways Again, you can see how I'm really overdoing it here with the uh, with the pink flare or whatever. But that's that's sort of what I want. You know, that's sort of what I wanted to to achieve. Basically, the effect of it being really magical. I am uh, still thinking about what I should say. Uh, this uh, video is gonna last for another two minutes and a half, and then we're done. To be honest, whenever I do a commentary, I'm not exactly sure what I'm talking sometimes. So really, excuse me if I if I just start rambling something or I say something and I never finish it. Uh, sometimes I just simply forget. Commentaries for me were really difficult in the beginning. Now they're an experience where I just chill and do it. Uh, it's more like hanging out or, you know, I don't know how to exactly explain it. So I don't think about what I say, you know, I just talk like I have a conversation with a friend. Uh, except I have a conversation with my computer. So, yeah, that's not sad at all, you know. Oh, there we have a dead guy right there in the tree. You know, there's this one story an author of ours in Slovenia wrote about a, about a tree who had magical powers uh, of healing. And the only reason why I had magical powers of healing because there was like a pile of just dead bodies everywhere underneath it, just buried. And apparently that gave it its life energy. A pretty good, uh, pretty good story. Uh, but uh, here's the finished product. You can see a little bit of snow effects and everything. Again, this is gonna ch get changed a little bit. And that's the volcano right there. I really like how it has turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Uh, again, uh, I'm just gonna say this again. The project is good. I'm not trying to slander the thing. It is good I think you're gonna enjoy the actual gameplay as well